I think we have to ship here somewhere. There is. Hey, remember what I told you? The annihilation chamber. We don't have time to talk about this right now. Preparing engines. Engines active. Ready for launch. Go for launch. Antimatter drive engaged. That went to plan. I told you we should have upgraded our systems earlier. That was a bit rough. What happened? Same thing I've been saying for days. The magnets holding the antimatter in place have become too weak to sustain the reaction. Okay, well, according to the diagnostics, the insulation that protects the magnets from the intense energy of the annihilations gradually got weathered away each time we fired up the engines. The thinning of the insulation meant that the heat from the reaction reaching the magnets increased over time. This means that it receives so much energy the individual electron spins in the magnet are more likely to be in a higher energy state, and the opposing spin directions cancel out, making it a weaker magnet. I guess eventually you could also reach the Curie point. Once you go over this threshold, the metal has been subject to such a high amount of energy that changes the magnetic domain structure of the metal, demagnetizing it. Our current engine worked like this. We had fuel containing pure matter and antimatter held apart by magnets in a vacuum. Antimatter is simply matter that is negatively charged. So an antiproton would be negatively charged and an anti-electron would be positively charged. Makes sense. When matter and antimatter meet, they destroy each other and the mass undergoes a 100% conversion to energy according to Einstein's formula E equals mc squared. Because c, the speed of light, is such a large number, when you square it for just a little amount of mass, we can get so much energy to use in our engines. But now, we need to replace this. So what ideas have we got? We could release fission bolts behind us, detonating constantly, providing us with enough of an impulse to keep accelerating to extremely high speeds. Wait, you want to launch nukes behind us? It's a valid concept. I'd rather not. Any other ideas? Ion engines. Magnetic fields accelerate charged particles out of a thruster. Newton's third law states that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Because of the force on the ions, the same force is dealt with on our ship, in the opposite direction. We can use a small amount of fuel that can last us months, all while providing a small amount of thrust. How small? It would be half a newton of thrust. Half a newton? In space, there is no drag, so this tiny bit of acceleration will build up over time, allowing us to achieve a greater velocity. But I want to get into hyperspace now! No next year! Jeez, you two aren't easily satisfied. I guess we can rule out photonic propulsion. What's that? It sounds pretty cool. Photons are particles of light. They have momentum, where h is Planck's constant, and lambda is the wavelength of said light. When photons hit an object, they transfer their momentum, and thus imparting a small amount of force onto the object, resulting in an extremely small amount of acceleration. Now we wouldn't need huge amounts of fuel on our ship, as solar sails use starlight to propel themselves forward using large surface areas. We could even use lasers, but obviously you guys don't want to wait that long for us to reach higher velocities. Yep, I have places to get to. Well, this is our last idea, the Alcubierre drive. The Alcubo what now? The theoretical warp drive that the physicist Miguel Alcubierre theorized. We can't move through space faster than the speed of light, but if we bend space around us, to our will, we can get to a place faster than light would. Think of it like walking on a moving train. You could have a speed limit on how fast you move relative to the train, but someone viewing you from outside would see you moving faster than the train because the velocity of the train and you add up. So how does walking on trains allow us to go faster than light? Well, the reason why we can't go faster than the speed of light is because we aren't massless particles. But if we use exotic matter to warp space so that it contracts space in front of us and expands it behind us, the destination will be a lot closer to us and our source will be further away. This means that we can get from planet A to planet B faster than a photon traveling through normal space would. That sounds awesome! Where can we get some exotic matter? I'm sure we'll be able to get some at the nearest galactic Tesco's. Give me a day and I'll have the warp drive ready before you even know it. Let's do this. Engaging warp drive in T-minus 5, 4, 3, 